gonna hit it. We got a lot of news. We got triple. No, no. <laughs> we got. It's Jimmy, Scott, and Diggerman from the Theme Park Podcast. Are you looking to finally make that move to Orlando? Maybe you already live here and want to be closer to the parks. Use the official real estate agent of the Theme Park Podcast, LaurenCampbellRealtor.com. Lauren helped my mom both buy and sell her house. I bought a house of 10 years with Lauren. Didn't you marry her? Shush. I love my real estate agent, and you will too. Call Lauren Campbell at 407-325-4225. That's 407-325-4225. Goldwell Banker Realty. And welcome to this early edition of the Theme Park Podcast pre-show. It's Dickerman, Jimmy D, Scott Harris all here uh, on what is a Wednesday afternoon. Traditionally, we record the show on a Thursday, but uh, we're doing I'm a little early thrown off. Because it's Easter weekend. Yeah, that Easter thing going on. Cadbury eggs. Easter bunny. Mm-hmm. The whole shebang. Doing nothing Easter. At all? I'm going to, the, I'm going to Hollywood oh, Studios you're braving on the Saturday. Oh, yeah, I told you we're gonna we're gonna try the uh, lightning or not lightning. We're, well, we might. You're try gonna lightning. try all of it. We're gonna try Genie Plus. Yep, fifteen bucks. Good gonna, old man. Gonna gonna try it. See how it goes. I can't buy it in advance though. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, it says you got to wait till day of to buy Genie Plus. Yeah, is that normal? Yes. Yes, we talked okay. about the last. Well, last I thought week. it was only Lightning Lane that you could only buy day of. I think you, it's, you should listen to some theme park. Uh, no, podcasts. I just I don't listen closely to when you guys <laughs> talk, and I heard Lightning Lane you can only buy day of, yeah. and then I figured Genie Plus you could buy whenever. But no, day of, starting at 7 a.m. Um, no, I think I'm going to go to the movies. There's a bunch of stuff I want to go out and see. Well, you are a uh, AMC premiere member, a list member. A-list member. I still want to go, I want to go see uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. I've heard it's good. I think I missed my window to see X. Oh, really? Yeah. I saw that. It was pretty good. I know. I, mean, I want to see it. I mean, For what it was. Exactly. And it just looks like a lot of fun. I did get my tickets for The Northman, but that doesn't come out for a month. Okay. I do want to see my that. Viking movie. Uh, why don't you go see Morbius? Because I want to see what should be good movies. Oh, I mean, if there's nothing else, I know he's your good friend, Doctor Michael Morbius. Yes, but I, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need the Michael Morbius experience. You know, I just feel like you just kind of need to see it just to no, see it. Just like Venom and Venom, let there be carnage. I don't feel like I need oh, to see the them. Venom movies are good. You've seen the Venom movies, right, Jimmy? Yeah, they. I mean, the second one was okay. They're just fun. Uh-huh. They're fun. It's. It's a little mindless. Uh huh. Morbius isn't fun. It's just there. <laughs> it's it's just Morbius. It's, you know they it they, exists. They it hurt exists. that movie so bad by like throwing all that MCU stuff into the trailers, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, "Oh my god, it's gonna be Spidey! It's gonna have the Vulture!" And they cut all of the cool stuff out, and then people are like, "Well, what the heck?" And uh, it just wasn't well put together. Like the director, or I don't know who we blame the editor here. Must be the director. It just was not. With the writers, at, like it gets to actors. like the climax, and like okay, that's it. I think they changed a lot of characters midway through making the movie. The extra scene in the end. Uh huh. Can I talk about what it is? No. Okay. Why not? Well, there's an extra it's scene known by everyone. Where, where he interacts with another person. You can tell they are obviously not in the same state, probably not even in the same country. Uh-huh. All you have Jared Leto going, really? Okay. <laughs> That's it. It was, was so badly pieced together. Was it as badly pieced together as the coda scene in, or the epilogue in Zack Snyder's Justice League? It was, I would say, worse than that. Yeah, because that was pretty bad. It was, but when you see this, when you see this and you can see how obviously they're not in the same room, I I feel like the room tone even changes when the voices change. The audio sounds off. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, hello, doctor, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what it is. Have you guys ever, is it Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist with uh, Kat Denning and uh, Michael Sarah? I know what it is, but I haven't seen it. Never seen it. I feel like that would be a movie you would see. I, yeah, probably. Yeah, because I feel like you're Scott Pilgrim, but um, I'm watching this movie and they're having a conversation like in the back of a car or a limo or something. And I'm like, who are they talking to? Because it's not to each other. Because this mm-hmm. does not fit. Like, I don't know who cut that together, but it was an... Uh, S job. It was yeah. Really bad. Yeah. That that annoys that annoys me. Anybody that's ever worked with audio or video, you can see it immediately. If I guess if you don't, maybe it doesn't jump out at you. But like people that have seen it, no. 
Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah. Every time I see uh, Gilmore Girls on TV, I want to close my head in a car door. <laughs> Is it that? Is it the video cuts or the audio it, cuts? It's just the way that the directors or whomever, the producers or whatever, the way they have their dialogue, it's not natural. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's almost like they're reading the dialogue like they're trying to hit the post. It just like I don't know. It it does not sound. That's like, because that show was r like written in such a way that you have to read it word specific, and I'm wondering if it's just like. No one talks like that. No, it, that's that's exactly my point. It is not natural at all, and to me, it is so jarring that it makes me uncomfortable that it exists. Are you guys just trying to get me to watch a segment of Gilmore Girls? Because I've never, I seen never watched one. Gilmore Girls. I've, I've never, yeah, not even a I, second of it. But I kind of want to now just to hear what you're talking about. Like I, I, I'm, my wife would watch it, and I'm walking in a room like, what the hell are you watching? Like, stop what? it. Like, are you did you find like college like projects or something like film school projects? That's like, my wife this? watching those reality shows on Netflix. Oh yeah, don't get me started on The Bachelor in my house. You should watch Human Resources. I don't know what that is. You watch Big Mouth, right? Uh, yeah. It's about the workplace of all the monsters. Okay. I might so it's like a side. Okay. Spinoff thing. I'm gonna watch it. All right, you guys want to do a theme park show? Yes. We should. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. From the theme park capital of the world, Orlando, Florida, this is the Theme Park Podcast. Wait, podcast? Is this on the radio? Why does everything got to be so messy on this station? Anyway, here's your hosts, Dickerman, Jimmy D, and Scott Harris. And welcome to the Theme Park Podcast. It is Dickerman. Jimmy D is here. What's up, fellas? And Scott Harris as well. Hello. Hi. Uh, we are heading into Easter weekend, which uh, Jimmy has described as potentially the busiest weekend of the year at theme parks. Mm -hmm. It is going to be Easter getting out there. It is kind of like a, a perfect storm because you still have some spring breakers. You've got some holiday people. You've got mm -hmm. the beautiful spring weather. And uh, it's all happening all at the same time. Yes. So uh, this weekend could be a nightmare at a theme park, which uh, I'm planning to attend on Saturday. <laughs> probably the busiest of all days. Yes. I think it's like only, I think it's got to be in the top five. I mean, I still think like July 4th is probably. Oh, yeah, you think? As someone that, I told you, I went to see the fireworks at Epcot mm -hmm. on July 4th. And while waiting in my car to leave, I watched all of Captain America the First Avenger <laughs> before I could move my car. You don't want to do that nowadays with the gas prices the way they are. You don't want to be two hours in your car waiting to move. I mean, I got a hybrid, so it's not as bad, but True. still. True. Yeah, that is that is worth considering. That is worth considering. I'm not even sure I turned my car on. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to remember that for uh, for Saturday when we're out there mm -hmm. trying to get in and get out. Yeah, you're gonna want to have some post park snacks in the car. Yeah, like a cooler with some water, maybe yeah. some grapes. We're going to Hollywood Orange Studios, slices. the smallest park and the busiest park. Yeah, you're asking for punishment. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. yeah. We're gonna try Lightning Lane. I think we're gonna try it, and we're definitely gonna try the Genie Plus. Okay. Only need Lightning Lane there. It appears for. Um, Rise, Rise of the Resistance, because yep. who wants to... As long as you get it. ...pay for Mickey and Minnie. Exactly, as long as you get it. So you got to shoot early. Um, as theme park uh, podcasters, we should know what the experience is like, so I will be sharing that after we attempt to get it on Saturday. Good. Because <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, we, we haven't done it yet, right? No, nobody, I nobody's tried it. I haven't had a need to, to do it yet. Yeah, yeah. It, it has not... Two things, the need and the opportunity just haven't presented themselves. Well, I'm a hypocrite because I've been railing against this thing since day one, mm -hmm. So, and I'll be the first one to buy it now. You know what will happen? You'll do it, and then Bob Chappick will come out and see, like, this guy bought it. And he it hates has, it more than anybody. And he hates spending money, so it has to last forever. Yeah, you might be right. I, if I'm the one that tips it over the edge, I'm really going to feel a great deal of shame. Yeah. That's uh, it's not going to be Little good. W genie plus guy yeah uh we did make some trips out to the park this past week yeah. um scott, Everybody. You, scott you were supposed to go out to universal did it happen didn't happen didn't happen didn't happen <laughs> didn't didn't occur the weather was too uh chilly for no the, that was the perfect plant. that was perfect then for we the... were gonna do water rides and then oh, it was well, well you, gotta, you gotta be able to adjust on the fly and well the thing the... is no we looked at the weights and it was i think the shortest wait for any of the the good rides was 50 minutes oh so it was just busy. It was gorgeous outside, so it was just a busy day. You could have just wore a wetsuit. We, we, ironically enough, all of those rides were only five minutes. 
There you surprise, go. surprise. We had a, un, a surprisingly cool April weekend here. I think a wetsuit would have been cheaper than the Express Pass. Yes. That might so. be true. Um, I, I just a, want to know how your restaurant experience went. I, it was great. Uh, Jimmy, do you want to get to yours first? though? So, because uh, my whole trip all around, was it went really well. Yeah, I, I went on Saturday, and uh, which I thought was going to be a buzzsaw to the face, mm-hmm. and it was not. Really? It was, um, Mind you, we went to Epcot, and our objective was to eat and drink. Right. And none of the lines for any of the kiosks for the specialty food were particularly long. Like, we didn't have to wait for much of anything. So That's surprising. Well, what time What time was this jaunt out to Epcot? We started at 2 o'clock. Okay. So we got, And unfortunately, uh, we got there at 2 o'clock. And that's like so, a park hop time. See, I always yeah, kind so of really plan. busy getting into there. My thought is people generally, when they go to Epcot, they go for the second half of the day. It's usually not your starting park if you're doing multiple parks, I feel like. I feel like you're starting somewhere else. Then at 2 o'clock, let's go to Epcot for the evening. We, we eat and we drink and go into the night. That's basically what we did. We just didn't park hop. Yeah. But uh, I, we did play, um, oh, my God, I can't believe I, I uh, am unprepared. But Spike's, um, oh, God. It's like a scavenger hunt thing? Yeah, it's a scavenger oh, okay. hunt thing, and I can't remember the name of it. I, it they used to, great yeah, broadcaster they, I am. No, they used to have the one for, a, wow, now uh, it was like a video game carry. I want to, I well, it was Kid Possible for a while. Kid Possible, yeah. The Kid Possible thing was completely different, though, because they gave that you like was a, only for Epcot itself. The Spike one is tied into the festival. I haven't even yes. heard of this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah and Kim Possible, they gave you like a, a pseudo, like fake cell phone, yeah. and you would press things like keys, and it would make certain things in the attractions. Like if you went to China and you pressed the right code in, it would make a golden monkey come mm-hmm. out from the, the water. Well, I'm disappointed and, that I didn't do this. Yeah. Call, call me, beat me. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's over. They don't do that anymore? No. Uh, no. Ah, I wish and that, got done replaced, it. that got replaced with an Agent Perry the Platypus. Oh, that's the one I remember. From Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. It usually ties into like uh, a, a relevant Disney Channel yeah. show. Yeah. So what they've done through the festival is uh, just like they do with food and wine where they'll ha- hide Remy's in all the countries. Mm-hmm. They hid um, Spikes, which is the B character that okay. like aggravates uh, Donald Duck. And they placed them all over the park and it, this time it wasn't just in the countries though it's also in the topiaries and stuff that are in uh the uh, not the world showcase but i guess future world okay or, so there's a lot of different lands now there are. yeah i can't remember what well anyways front uh, half is future world back half is world showcase yeah that's what i thought okay but i was then i was like Tomorrowland. no like, no nope, that's different that's yeah, that, a completely different island that's george clooney park. <laughs> anyways um so we got a bunch of food, and I did the spikes thing, and of course I did the the spikes scavenger hunt because one of the prizes you could get was orange bird related. Okay, which is surprised that they wouldn't just do like an orange bird scavenger hunt, and maybe yeah. for other festivals they have. And, and, and the other thing that's crazy to me too is like they've got all this like new flower and garden merch that they're just now rolling out. What was all that orange bird stuff that you rolled out for flower and garden? Like I thought that was you know, but all the orange bird stuff, like a good portion of it is gone. Like I wanted the flower pot gone. And then a lot of the other stuff was like limited. They had a bucket hat gone. So it's like they had a lot of cool stuff, but a lot of it's all sold see, out already. I, I, I've learned this. You got to treat you got to treat festival merchandise the same way you treat anything you see at MegaCon. You see it, you just get it right then and there because it might yeah. not be back when you go. Even the same day, it might be gone. That's true, and you never get a discount on that festival merchandise unless they have so much of a surplus no, that ends it, up over at the Cast Connection. You get a discount. You get your your annual pass discount. I meant but, like at MegaCon, you know, they'll knock. I have fifty percent off. I got to go. I don't want to put it in the trailer. Well. I got greedy a couple of times, and I was like, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait it out. I'm gonna get this shirt on clearance." Mm-hmm. And the shirt sold out. <laughs> so then, mm-hmm. then when it, they restocked, and they only had like a couple of sizes, I jumped on it, and I was like, "Nope, no, I'm not doing that anymore." I can I'm, fit into a small. I'll just change my diet. <laughs> I'm with Scott. It's like to me, it's if I'm gonna feel, if I'm gonna be mad that I missed out on this, I'm just gonna pay for it now. Yeah. Rather than like roll the dice, and if it's one of those things I'm willing to roll the dice on, then that's a different story. But yeah, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, we we stayed for like five hours, and we got to eat all the foods, and went all the way around the countries. It was great. Did you ride a single ride while you were there? Just the food rides. Okay, <laughs> just the food rides. Oh, so you so but the food rocks. You did food rocks. They brought that back. No, no. Oh. I know what you're talking about, and that was cool. Um, it so, was inside living with the land. Oh, you ever seen like a. A, a thing of grapes playing the drums? No. It's like Californ- the California I've Raisins. I've seen the California Raisins. Yeah. It's, it's like that. It was all different, like, fruits and vegetables playing in a band. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's all right. Um, so 
We went over to Trails End, which is over at Fort Wilderness. Fort Wilderness, not right. Wilderness Lodge. Correct. Correct. Two different things. That area is so mad. I haven't been over there in a little while. It's and so not big. Fort Wilderness Lodge, because that's not a thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> no, I say that all the time. Oh, right. Wilderness Constantly Lodge. Say. It is easy to get them confused. No, so we went over to Fort Wilderness, mm -hmm. and uh, you get there. They do check you in. They make sure you're you have a reason to be there. It used to be I feel like it was a lot looser, but they were like, mm. "What are you doing here?" They, well, they closed the th the the loophole that you would exploit. What was that? In order to just get free parking. Oh yeah, well yeah. Um, they do have a ton of parking there, but yeah, you can't get around there unless you take a bus. So you get there, you park, you jump on a bus. Not a long wait to get to the bus. We had to go all the way to the back end of Fort Wilderness, which is quite a ways. I think it's like oh, yeah. a mile. It's I think it might be more than that. Yeah, so we. I rode it on my bike, and it okay. took a while to get back there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's 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 a haul to get down there, but it was a the bus came pretty quickly. the The trip over there was pretty quick, so you get over there, um, they drop you off, and you walk over to Fort Wilderness, and it's a right now it's a family style. I think it has been a buffet in the past, mm -hmm. but. Um, Trails End family style, 29 bucks, which, you know, in Disney prices is pretty darn cheap. Yeah. All things considered, you know, it's it's all you care to eat. Uh, they might have lost money on us because I did the regular version. My wife did the, the vegetarian mm -hmm. version. Did she which, bring a big purse? Uh, no. But the vegetarian version had some weird stuff in it. Barbecued jackfruit. That's delicious. Uh, no. Did you try it? Yeah. Well, then you're wrong. She didn't really care for it either. <laughs> it was just a bit much. Um, but, yeah, they had, they had some odd things in there. They had a, a vegan Italian sausage. Nice. Sounds good. No. No, the flavor was right. The consistency was off. Mm. But this is me talking, and I'm just like, you're I got a big plant-based guy. I got the yeah, big well, meat why bowl. Are, why are you, like, having you do a food review is like having a... Like a blind person, tell me about painting. I tasted all of her stuff. I mean, I, I tried it all. Um, now, the, the cornbread and the salad, the salad they brought out was amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. It had a bacon vinaigrette on it. Wow. <laughs> it was the best dressing I have ever had. Did yes. you, so, did you invent the, a salad dressing? <laughs> bring me more of that liquid bacon, please. It was amazing. I'm like, I, I normally I'll, I'll eat a little bit of salad just so I do. It wasn't mm -hmm. salad dressing. You poured bacon grease on your exactly. salad. Exactly. <laughs> on some lettuce it was, leaves. It was delicious. <laughs> I would like a barrel of uh, <laughs> the bacon vinaigrette. Uh, sir, it doesn't come in uh, that. It Can was, you at least put it in my souvenir cup? <laughs> yeah, it was it was really good. And they bring out a cornbread and a skillet and they yes. have this honey butter that goes with it mm -hmm. fantastic my my bowl which is actually supposed to be for two i think they don't change the size when just one person orders mm -hmm. it. they still bring you the family style it was loaded with pulled pork brisket um chicken a half of a chicken a literally a half of a chicken mm -hmm. um potatoes green beans i mean i couldn't get through it i couldn't even come close to getting through it um and then dessert is three different types of mousse Oh, okay. And they actually brought us four because they brought her the vegan one, which is uh, a lemon something mm. or other. Okay. Like moose? Like, no. Not like moose and squirrels? Like a moose, like <laughs> like a, like a Thank thick you, pudding, like a thick pudding type oh. of moose. It was chocolate. Are you sure it wasn't just like moose pate? No, it was really good. It was chocolate, um, candy apple, and banana pudding. And you ate all three of them. flavors. And the last one was lemon. Yeah, we ate them all, of course. Yeah. And we were in great pain when we got <laughs> up to leave. And they give you a pass holder discount, so... Um, the price was really fair. Did you go to the park afterwards? Yes, we did. And this in, was the in, best in part. In immense pain. This was the best part because you're over at Fort Wilderness. You just hop on a boat to Magic mm -hmm. Kingdom. It's a big. It's a bigger boat than they have over at the Poly for whatever reason. Yeah. The boat is is larger, so there was tons of room. You could sit in the front and back. We rode in the back um, to go over there. Did you take notes? About what? Driving the boat. No, no, yeah, no, it's no. not your retirement. It's your plan. future because job. Because this guy, this boat, the boat captain is up mm. in like an upper tier. Like oh, he's up in like a little. But he's like, yeah. He's got like a little boat captain section. Okay. Um. He's so, called the helm. Yeah, it was a really nice boat ride over. You're right there on the water. It was gorgeous. Weather was great. You missed out, Scott, by thinking it was too cold. It was perfect. Um. The boat ride over is great. No, I just said it was too cold to do water rides, yes. and then it was too nice of day. For everyone to go. Yeah, well, that might be the case. Um, but getting into Magic Kingdom, such a breeze coming from over there. No no monorail, no trying to get on that giant boat with 800,000 other people. You walk right in, super mm -hmm. easy. You go through that own private security section there, right into the park. Um, the park wasn't that crowded either. Now, we got over there around, I guess, around 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and so we popped around. We did 
Big Thunder. We did Pirates. We did the People Mover. I think we did. Did we do Buzz? Yeah, we did Buzz. Yep, yep. I got smoked on Buzz. Um, and then uh, about, I want to say it was the park closed at 11. We left around 10. Mm. When we went to leave, normally a nightmare, right? But you go to a different boat. Go right to that little boat. Right over to Fort Wilderness, take that relaxing boat ride back. You get off the boat, bus comes, picks you up, takes you back to the parking lot. Nice. It was uh, it was the easiest trip to Magic Kingdom I've had in some time. Yeah, that, I bet. The That's... only easier way to go to Magic Kingdom is to park at Contemporary. Literally, and... I think you could not find, like, that's a longer path to take than going to the transportation center. Right. It's probably the longest path you can take. Maybe it is, but it's so relaxing. And it's a nice, it's like almost like another ride when you're riding on that nice little boat. Mm-hmm. You got a whole nother ride for the night. Yeah, I mean, I think the easiest the easiest way to do Magic Kingdom is you stay at the Contemporary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if you got the money and your whole goal is to go to Magic Kingdom and you don't want to be frustrated, mm. stay at the Contemporary. Because Floridian's too far of a walk. No, I mean you can do it. I mean, no, Jimmy I mean, and I did it. It was fine. Yeah, end of the night. No, but I mean, like at the if you want the most easy, relaxing. Mm-hmm. No, the easy w- relaxing way is to hide in the bathroom when the park closes and avoid security. Actually, the easy relaxing is you stay in the Cinderella Castle suite. How do they find everybody in the park when they close up? Do, do we know? Is there like they some do a sort sweep. of secret they do a sauce? Sweep. But I know. But like, if you're hiding, like if you find a really good hiding spot, they must know all the hiding spots, right? Yes. I've had to do sweeps at SeaWorld mm-hmm. and. There's no place to hide. Really. Yeah. There's cameras that, first of all, are the initial first wave, and uh-huh. then there's humans. I wonder what they do when they find somebody <laughs> hiding, because obviously they it make has them, to happen. They make them leave. Well, I'm sure they make them leave, but is there further repercussions if they catch you hiding in the bushes? It depends on how you act when you're told to leave. Oh! oh I, I think regardless if they find you in the park like after hours, you're going to get trespassed. Yeah. Fritz and I got locked in Universal once on accident. Because you got lost trying to find your car? No, we were at a TNA wrestling taping mm-hmm. when they used to do them in the back lot. And we ended up hanging out so long after all the wrestlers and the staff would park in the back. Yeah. You know, and they just leave yeah, out the back. In the production lot. We had to get back through the front. And no one else was around. And all the gates were closed. Uh-huh. We had to end up jumping a fence next to the hard rock to get out. We had to escape the park because everything was sealed and there was nobody around anymore. We I could, could see that happening, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of the gates are like these tall metal slats. There's nothing to climb. Yeah. You can't climb them because they're just they're like solid and they're mm. slats. We had to find like that little chain link fence that separates the hard rock and the park. If Fritz would have gotten on top of a fence in this in this situation, and you he couldn't lift you, would you have just said, "This is it. This is where I live now." This is this is my home now. Yeah. This is my see Fritz and I. We were younger then, and we both had sneakers on. I think Baldinger was with us, who uh, who did traffic reports for a long time, and he had like dress shoes on and stuff. And he's trying to climb the fence. He was he was a bit older than us too. Somehow I'm imagining the scene from the trailer of uh, the new Nick Cage movie where uh, Pedro Pascal is trying to lift him over a wall, and it's like just walk around. Yeah, yeah. Are you there, sure you couldn't just walk around? There might have been a walk around somewhere, <laughs> but I mean every. Everywhere we look, we're locked. Oh, we're locked in. I'm trying to think, because you've been backstage there. I'm sure a million oh, times. Oh yes, a hundred times. Uh, and I've also been there after hours. So I'm trying to think of what would have been open. There's ways to do it. There are ways. But There's they, the cast member. There's the way that the, or the the team members. They don't get sealed up though. That like I feel like they do seal it up. Eh. City Walk is sealed up from uh, the backstage area. I think you could. Uh, you probably just didn't investigate enough. We might not have. You know, it's in that. You know, like, uh oh, oh crap, we're gonna get arrested. Sort of mm-hmm. a situation. We're not supposed to be here. No one else is around anymore. Our you, story it's the sounds, guy that well, parked under the Iron if, Gwazi. If you were hanging out with those wrestlers, why didn't you just they catch are, a ride? They well, they were already gone, and we're like, all right, see y'all later. They went their way, and we went the other way that we needed to go. And their way was the complete opposite because they're going out to you know that back back lot. Yeah, and you probably didn't know that you were locked in. Did no. either of you think, oh no, we're gonna have to walk out through that security? gate and then walk all the way around. I don't know if we got, and I don't think this was not a time when Uber was a thing. This was pre-Uber. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That would have been a long walk. I don't know what we yeah. thought. That, that, That's the, miles. Yeah. The one thought was we're going to we're gonna get over one of these fences somewhere somehow. Yeah. <laughs> we did, but um, yeah. So it can happen. You can be locked into a yes, park. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, speaking of Universal, um, some more permits are filed for that uh, Despicable Me situation. Is that right? Uh, there's been two permits have been filed. Mm-hmm. One for the mummy okay. uh, oh, about mummy when it comes one. to uh, pyrotechnics and things like that uh, within the ride. So they're going to redo some of that. Probably stuff. redo some of that. And then there was uh, some 3D stuff was uh, 
uh, permitted for um, what we assume is going to be the villain cons experience where Shrek takes place. So that's going to be more Despicable Me in the mm-hmm. place of the former Shrek over there. Just Universal. make it a little uh, Despicable Me quadrant. I, I don't see why they couldn't. I yeah. mean, they have Skull Island kind of for King Kong, which that's a pretty darn big area over there for King yeah. Kong. I mean, when you look at it, you're like, this is impressive. I mean, what, they, what they've what they done with that whole section over there. I mean, Simpsons Land is pretty big when you really think about it. Simpsons Land, I think they, they made that super cool. Like, they started with, like, a ride and then mm-hmm. a couple other rides, and then they made it a true land. Yeah. Um, and they had, to, they had to put the boardwalk game somewhere because that used to be at Jaws. True. True. Those boardwalk games, man. That'll sucker a kid in every day. Um, by the way, speaking of permits, um, it looks like we might have some details on the Ministry of Magic ride at Epic Universe. Okay, all right. Elevator ride. Oh, like a Tower of Terror situation? Kind of, but one that will go up, down, and around. You've seen the Harry Potter movies, so you know mm-hmm. about the elevators oh, and the Ministry yeah. of Magic. Like, I'm still I'm still blown away by what they're able to do with Tower of Terror, because it's basically a drop ride. Mm-hmm. But, like, the fact that it can go, you know, side to side and back and forth is amazing to me. And yeah. so if they're going to expand upon that with this... Mm-hmm. That'll be cool. Yeah, think of the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. Yeah. that I mean, that's that sounds great. I mean, Universal has had some big-time home runs these mm-hmm. last couple of years with some of the new rides. With It really started, I feel like it really started with uh, Escape from Gringotts. Yes. Being this, this cool hybrid where it's a roller coaster, it's a motion ride, it's a little bit of both. Um, and then Hagrid's Hybrid. incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the... Details, the details, and, and the mechanics, and the physics of that ride. I mean, amazing, mm-hmm. amazing. That's an incredible ride. And then, of course, Velocicoaster, Velocicoaster yep. which is just insane. Yeah, I mean, it, the only one where, in my opinion, I was not a fan of was Jimmy Fallon, and I think it's because I don't watch his show. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of that, and I get the synergy, but that's just a, basically a motion ride too, right? Yeah, that's they're not my favorite. Just mm-hmm. like Fast and the Furious, you know, not yeah. great. It exists. They got to think about re- changing that, right? Morbius is the Fast and the Furious of movies. <laughs> it really is. Yes, <laughs> it really is. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to like throw away a ride already because how long has that thing been out? Four, five, six years, seven years? I, I don't four know. Four years. They were they started building that when I first started working at Universal. Yeah. So and that was two thousand. Fifteen. The queue's cool. I mean, the queue's great. The well, I told you, it looks like there's going to be a how ho- uh, a, a Horror Nights house through there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's a better use of that space. I just wonder, like, when that ride got approved and like, yeah, this is good. Like, who said that? It's, Who's the it, one that said it, that? So this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say. Like, like, not a fan of the ride. I know, like, one person is a fan of the ride. But you know what it does? It does something very well. It churns through people at a large amount. Yeah. And sometimes you just need rides like that. Yeah. That's the people mover. Like, we... Like the people you, moving around the other night where it's like, I love this ride. You could pack a ton of people in it. It's air conditioned. So sometimes people will put up with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it could have been so much more. I think I think that's the problem is it's a huge franchise. It could have been so much more. Mm-hmm. And what it is is just not great. Well, OK. Can I quickly? We got like three minutes to go. Mm-hmm. I think I figured out what's going to get this one to another country. Okay. Disney, uh, Walt Disney Studios in Paris. Mm-hmm. I, that Paris park, when I watch the, the behind the scenes, that park looks amazing. We'll have a Iron Man, which will be fully electric audio animatronic. Oh, really? Because they have an Avengers Assemble Flight Force coaster. Oh, I want to go. There will be an animatronic Iron Man. Can we go and uh, write it off on our taxes? See, and uh, there's a Toad Hall restaurant. See? My guy! I say we go! See, I want to go to, uh, is it Shanghai that's got the Pirates of the Caribbean that is freaking nuts? I want to go to all of them. I want to go to Mystic Manor. I want to do all, I want to do it all. Can we write this off on our taxes? Is that yes. something we could do? Like if we Yes! Go? We yeah. just have to incorporate the podcast, the oh, problem. Okay. okay. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll talk to my CPA. And, and we actually we have there. to start churning a profit on the podcast. Uh, Fritz did it with Between the Ropes. I don't think he ever made money on that before. We don't <laughs> need to turn a profit. You can lose money. I, I, I think Tax write off. I think Netflix still loses money. <laughs> they do lose, uh, yes. They uh, they take an L, I think, every uh, every what, quarter. What's Netflix? Ne- Netflix. It's, yeah, a ne- different, it's a different thing. It's just next. <laughs> it's all Movies country music. Yeah, that's all it is. That's the whole thing. Yeah, Netflix loses money all the time. <laughs> Um, yeah, I want to do that. I want to go to Paris. I say we go. Let's do it. All right. 
If you want to follow us on social media, you can do so on Twitter at Theme Park Show or Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at the Theme Park Podcast or watch at the Theme Park YouTube.com. And the show comes to you live from the Lauren Campbell Realtor.com Tebow Gazebo Studios for Jimmy D, for Scott Harris. I am Dickerman. Until next time, we will see you out at the parks. This has been the Theme Park Podcast. Follow the show on Facebook and Instagram at the Theme Park Podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, check out the Theme Park Podcast.com, the iHeartRadio app, or Apple Podcasts. Did we're clear. All right, let's go to Paris. Now? Yeah. I think they might still be a mask mandate there. That was the thing. Hey, somebody was saying they were going to somewhere. I guess it was England where they don't have any mandates. And they said that was one of the reasons they were traveling there. So they didn't have any restrictions when they got there. Don't go to Philadelphia. Philly's got them back, right? Philly's got them back. Ugh. Motown Philly. Seems like a weird one to bring them back first. Masks are back again. I don't know, man. No rhyme or reason. Apparently lifts, you still need them here. I, w- I could see that because, I mean, you're riding in a car with some, that's really close quarters. Unless the windows are down or the top's down. Yeah. That is close quarters. I could see that. Are we going to do a post show on this uh, early, early Wednesday? I got no ideas for one. Okay. All right. I'm glad we didn't try to do anything topical and bring up like Guardians because we still don't have. Any- I'm waiting for that email to come. I think it's Friday morning. That's my guess. Friday morning, 8 a.m. Everyone has kind of, I think it'll be a little bit later than that. You're probably around like 9 or 10. I think okay. Remy's was about 9 or 10. Okay. Oh, um, so is that the ante- anticipation is Friday? The the thought process is um, if you use the same timeline for pass holders when they got um, Remy, it kind of uh, from when it would open, it's around the same time frame. Because it looks like we know when the da- They've already, cast members already have their dates. And DVC members and D23 people all have theirs now. Oh, they got dates, huh? Yeah, well, D23, you have to buy into yours. Okay. Uh, but cast members have theirs, because I saw Bacon tweet about it. Oh, is he working over there? I don't, I don't know, man. Apparently so. I'm going to tweet him. Hey, what are you doing over there? I, I don't, um... Don't tweet him? I don't have Twitter anymore. Yeah, I deleted my Twitter. Yeah, I, I just haven't. I got, I, I got. Well, now Elon's on Twitter. Maybe, maybe Twitter's gonna become cool again. Okay, well, <laughs> you understand why he did that, right? He yeah. did that for PR reasons. I, 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 I understand. He probably did it for a lot of reasons. Yeah, but he uh, has already turned down being on the board. Yeah, well, if you get on the board, you can only buy a certain amount of shares. So well, also, you can't say whatever you want. Yeah. So. He's really not going to do he anything. He might just flip it. He just might bring the stock up and then flip it and make a profit. Exactly. So he's not going to do everything that, like, what everyone thought he was going to do. Nah, I don't know. Who knows what he's going to do. Do you guys want an edited putt? He's going to do what he's going to do. All right. So I say we probably take this week off of extra park hours for Easter. Uh, we celebrate okay. Easter Bunny, and then uh, we'll be back next week with uh, extra park hours. James, that good with you? Works for me. Works All for right. me. All right, well, Jimmy, say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, stream. Bye, stream. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in early. Bye-bye. If you did. I'm sure they did. Bye. If not, they'll find the video on the, on the, the website.